Joel Embiid headed to the locker room. Jalen Johnson headed to the locker room. Both lose out on massive minutes. Both eventually come back. But you want to know what those minutes were for those guys tonight? Jalen Johnson was on pace to play probably 35 minutes or so. Only plays 29. You want to know what Joel Embiid ended with tonight? Also in massive foul trouble. 35 minutes. Absolutely breaking the slate. 35 minutes in overtime, he fouls out. Embiid's been playing about 40 minutes a game right now, so you add that extra what? I don't know. Five minutes for OT, plus another, what, five for the foul trouble? Eight for the foul trouble? He lost out on what, like a good 11, 12 minutes tonight? To absolutely bail out the faders? Yeah, um, and then if you, if you want to add another OT... You can do that if he doesn't fall out. So just, if you played in bead, you you, you kind of got lucky with the overtime, but you got extremely unlucky with the foul trouble and the blowout, or uh, foul trouble and the age, uh, foul out. Um, but yeah, man, uh, just extremely, extremely tilted. I, I just can't run any worse than I've been running the past week with injuries and other shit. It's just, it's been brutal, man. But I'm not going to let that get me down because... There's always a slate the next day. I am confident in the plays that I made today. If you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make videos. I post them on this subreddit called DF Sports 1S, so DF Sports. Good community. We talk strategy, etc. Um, I post updates with all the news that comes out throughout the day, so you know where my head's at. I respond to you guys. You guys ask me questions. You guys can talk strategy in the comments. I respond to you guys. As you can see, I answer, try to answer absolutely freaking, absolutely everyone. Um, I try my best. If I miss you, if I don't have time, like sometimes I'll run out of time. I do apologize. But if you, as you can see here, I try to respond to absolutely everybody the best I can. So if you, if you need any help with any of the slates, I'm always going to be here for you. Um, so yeah, um, if you ever need to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me on Reddit Messenger. Or you can get a hold of me on Twitter Messenger at Tori Langley, um, one nine nine two. Um, I make it a point to you know be available for you guys. Try to respond to you guys when you need help, etc. Whether that's with lineups, if you just want someone to talk to, um, I'm always going to be here for you guys. Um, and then if Discord is something you're interested in, I will have a link to that down below where I'll have in-depth videos going over each slate. Player pools for cash, GPPs, cores for cash, GPPs. All of that will be in the comments down below. So check that out if you are interested in that. Um, going over my lineup tonight, I finished five points out from the cash. Um, I think 340. Yeah, was the cash line? Was that 333? Just Dylan Brooks, massive foul trouble. Pascal Siakam, he was fine. He salvaged. Joel Embiid, massive freaking foul trouble, fouls out, only plays 35 minutes in a double overtime game. Jalen Johnson gets injured, loses out on massive minutes. Low owned DeAndre Eaton, absolutely breaking the slate. Massive random blowout, only plays 27 minutes. The Sharks get punished. If you played DeAndre Eaton tonight, phenomenal play, you got punished. Shark play, punished. Just slapped in the face. Just, you know, I don't know. Have your friend come over and just slap you right in the face. Boom. Just unbelievable, man. Un unfreaking believable. But, you know, good nights in the Discord. Like, uh, this is the Discord. Just good nights. Just green everywhere. Um, really good night. Here, Cam had a W lineup with uh, Tyus Jones still. Brooke, Tim Hardaway Jr., Santi Aldama, Pascal Siakam, Andrew Damehair, Buddy Heald. Joel Embiid, this could have been the winner if Dylan Brooks learned how to shoot and if there wasn't a blowout in that Dallas game and Embiid didn't foul out. That was that could have been the winner there, but yeah. Um, just green, 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 green. Uh, yeah. Um, my core tonight, by the way, was Tyus Jones, Andrew Nemhard, uh, Dylan Brooks, and uh, Pascal Siakam. So everyone absolutely smashed. Siakam over 5x. Um, Tyus Jones absolutely was a must. Andrew Nemhard, absolute must. 
Um, Dylan Brooks was chalky enough to where if you had him, I don't really think it hurt you that much. So, yeah, that was a look back on my lineup. Luckily for me, Showdown did help the losses. Um, I went Nemhard, Captain, Steph, Poole, Yield, Matherin, Jalen Smith. Excuse me, guys. So this helped a little bit. Excuse me. Um, the actual optimal for the slate was actually Clay Thompson over Matherin. So I could have had the nuts here. If I went Clay over Matherin, my God, is this guy been awful. Shoot, shoot Matherin to the moon. You know, when I finally buy in, you know, he sucks, but you know, he's dropping forties freaking every other time. Like, I don't know what's going on, man, <laughs> but let's go over this disgusting slate. If you, if guys go small on the slate, this is the by far the worst freaking slate I've ever seen in my entire life. You couldn't pay me to put more than $100 on the slate. If you gave me $100 out of your pocket, I would give it right back to you and tell you no. I'm not doing it. I will not take your money to play this slate. Just no fucking way. I'll torch my own money, but if someone was... I, you couldn't pay me to play this slate, so... Just kidding. I'll take your money. Give me $100. Uh, just... <laughs> But no, this slate is absolutely fucking disgusting. Uh, but going over it, so Detroit is an absolute mess right now. So if you guys don't know this website, it's called popcornmachine.net. Um, so Detroit is an absolute shit show right now. So um, let me show you guys. So the first game that I'm talking about here is the first game that I'm about to show you of three games. So th they played their starters normal rotation minutes in the first half. And then in the second half, they benched their starters. They only played him, they, they played him th four minutes in the second half, or three minutes. And then they benched them. And then they some of them, only a few of them, came back in the fourth quarter. So that was quite interesting. The next game that I'm going to show you is that showdown slate from the other night. Um, in That went to overtime. They played their guys their normal rotations. Obviously, Isaiah Livers got injured. Of course, he was in my lineup. But, um, yeah, got injured, but they played the guys' normal rotation minutes. Let's go up to their next game. I believe it was on the 4th. Um, this is important, because I don't think anyone on YouTube is going to show you guys this. So, be extremely careful. Like, people are probably going to say, oh, these guys are good, blah, 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 blah. But they're not going to show you what actually happened. So, please, 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 just be careful here. This was their last game. They did the same thing in the first game that I showed you. They played their starters their normal first half minutes. And then they benched them in the second half. Um, and then some of them came back into the fourth. Not all of them came back into the fourth. And it was different players each, each time in the fourth for those different games. So just be extremely, extremely careful here. I want to show you guys as much as I, po as I possibly can. Um, so going over this slate... Um, obviously, it's a bad matchup here, too. Um, Miami's 26th in pace. They are 8th in defensive rating. So, it's not even the best spot. So, Detroit might be a full fade for me. Um, they're all just GPP plays. So, Jaden Ivey, I believe, was coming off the bench. He did start last game. Um, Minutes-wise for him, I honestly have no idea. With what they're doing right now, I know he's probably going to play over 25 minutes. At that price tag, if he only is going to play 25 minutes, it's just not playable. Same with Bojan Bogdanovic at 6,800. It's just not playable if he's only going to play around 25 minutes. Now, if they're going to do a normal rotation where all the starters play over 30 minutes, then I think they're playable. They're all still GPP plays for me. I think Killian Hayes, point per dollar, would be my favorite. And then the bigs, just because they're the cheapest and they do have upside. Like Bagley does have upside. Stewart does have upside as long as they're staying out of foul trouble. Um, so I might have to rank Detroit. I don't know. The, ah, I, I, I really don't know. They're all just there for me. Um, fuck, man. It's tough. Um, they're all just G I'm just going to leave it with that. They're all just GPP plays. All right. If I had to rank them, IV 1, Bagley 2, Hayes 3, Stewart 4, Bojan 5 at their respective prices. But... Man, it's extremely tough for me to get to any of these guys, especially you're playing the lottery with their minutes. Their minutes have just been all over the place. Now, keep in mind, Isaiah Livers is out too. He was an intricate part of the... Um, I believe they wanted to start him this game because um, 
what's it called? Um, they wanted him on Luca. Um, I think I think that makes sense. I don't think they had anyone else to defend Luca there. I'm pretty sure, but uh, yeah, they're all just GPP plays for me. The bench, um, Jalen Dern, I'm pretty confident will at least play around 15 minutes. So I think he's, you know, a fine value play. I'm not going to go out of my way to play him, but there isn't a lot of value on this slate. So if Bagley and Stewart start alongside each other, I'm more confident in Dern's minutes. So, you know, if he, I'm pretty confident he'll play at least 15 minutes. So I think Duran's definitely a value play we can definitely look to on this slate. Uh, but I think there might be better value. Um, I think there are two value guys on this slate that I'll go over later that I think definitely look much better. But he's not far behind. I think, you know, he could definitely be a playable value. Diallo is only going to get blow a run. Um, Kojo, I think, only got that. Uh, it's, it's just tough, man. Just You're, you're throwing darts here. Oh, Miami. So it is a back-to-back. It is a good spot, though, against Detroit. Um, Detroit's 17th in pace. And, uh, wait, is it not a good spot? Have they been playing good defensively? No, I, don't, I thought they were terrible. Yeah, they are terrible. 29th in defense. So we're going to have to keep an eye on to the injury report. I'm surprised they all don't have questionable tags next to their name. Uh, so... We're going to have to keep an eye on the injury report. So right now, we'll go over assuming Butler is in. Uh, I mean, it's a good spot. Pricing, not much stands out to me. Like I said, this slate's terrible. Like, I think Butler at 8.6K is fine. I'm not expecting him to, like, come back um, and play massive, massive minutes. I think around mid-30s minutes is fine for him. Um, You know, has a high floor. You know, he's going to handle the ball a decent amount. He's their clear number one option. His picture freaks me out, by the way. Uh, but... Yeah, um, ranking him mid-range, I, th- I think there are better options, but, um, you know, he'll be the clear number one on this team. Good rebounder, good defender, you know, his his potential assists is all right. Um, definitely does have triple-double upside. Um, he's not going to shoot the ball 20-plus times, but a guy that can get it done in multiple ways. So, I think Butler's fine. I think Bama to Bio is a pretty good spot for him. You know, him and Harrow have been playing absolutely massive minutes of late, so... I kind of like Bam at the center position at 8K. There are some other guys we'll talk about, but I kind of like the spot. Um, I think with the minutes, him playing, you know, close to 40 minutes a game, he only needs to average about a fantasy point per minute to pay off this price tag. And he is, he can easily do that. You know, he's he's usually averaging, you know, 1.2 to 1.3 fantasy points per minute. Uh, maybe not that high. I'd have to look, but... Yeah, I think Bam's a solid option. Tyler Harrow has been phenomenal, and he's playing huge freaking minutes. They finally learned to put him into the starting lineup. So, yeah, sign me up for some Tyler Harrow. Um, the only risk here is blowout. Um, but 40 minutes of Tyler Harrow, 7.2K. The price isn't moving. He's been absolutely destroying. His rebound numbers are up. His assist numbers are up. Um, I think Harrow is a good play. I don't think the industry is going to necessarily agree with me on that. I think they're going to say he's a bad play. They might say he's a bad play at this point, but they might say he's appropriately priced. But I think he's underpriced with the amount of minutes he's playing. So I think Harrow is definitely a pretty good play. Kyle Lowry, just a GPP play. I'd much rather get to Harrow for a few dollars more. And then with them running such a tight rotation... They're running an extremely tight rotation, so it's, it's impossible to get to the bench. Caleb Martin at 5.2K is obviously starting. Um, he's just too pricey for me. But getting to anyone else is extremely tough. Now, there is a value play I will mention here. If we get news that Jimmy Butler is going to rest. If Jimmy Butler is going to rest, I think Gabe Vincent's probably going to have to play over 20 minutes. And I definitely would be intrigued by him. He's not a three. He's not a min price player with um, when he's getting minutes. You know, he's not a good point per minute guy, but he's not a bad point per minute guy. We, like if we go back here to where he was getting like 20, 25 minutes, he was putting up like twenty fantasy points a game. And at min price, I would gladly take that on a three game slate. So if Jimmy Butler's out, I definitely do have some interest in Gabe Vincent, who I think would have to play, you know, probably fifteen to twenty minutes. Um. And then I'll make updates if we get news that uh, Jimmy Butler is going to be out. Um, tough matchup here for the Lakers. Uh, the Cavs play super slow. They're last in pace. Good defensively as well. Um, They're second defensive rating. One sec. So, 80, LeBron, um, 
both expected to play. Um, if you want to ride the Anthony Davis train, be my guest. He's taking a ton of shots. Look, if, like, look at his rebounds. He's averaging 12.8 rebounds per game, but over the past two weeks or so, he's averaging probably around 15. Um, his rebound rates are up and out. This definitely isn't the best spot uh, up against Cleveland, especially if Jared Allen's in, but I'm assuming he's going to be extremely, extremely popular tomorrow by people looking at game logs. I'd much rather go to Jokic at a fraction of the ownership. I'd have to look at ownership, but if you want to ride Anthony Davis's hot streak right now, I mean, it's really a scary fade with what he's doing. Last two games, 27 shots, 30 shots, um, 17 rebounds, 10 rebounds. You know, good defender as well. Probably going to get you multiple blocks a game. Um, but yeah, what's not to like about it? Anthony Davis, even in a tough match, I'm still fine with. So, yeah, I do like Anthony Davis as a spend up. Personally, if he's going to be very popular, I'd much rather go to Jokic. LeBron James, 10.4K, I think is firmly in play as well. Probably my least favorite spend up on the slate if I had to rank 80 LeBron, Jokic, Luka. Uh, but I think he's definitely in play. We know he does have a ceiling. We know he's going to be the uh, clear number one on this team, uh, you know, usage-wise. Um, going down a little bit further, Russell Westbrook at 6.5K coming off the bench probably plays around 30 minutes. At this price tag... I think he's a safe option. I don't really know if he has the ceiling to really win you a tournament at this price tag, but he's going to run that second unit as well. Um, have the ball in his hands a ton. Double-double upside, triple-double upside. Um, so, yeah, he's in play. Definitely not my favorite play, but he's definitely in play. And then there is a lot of value on the slate, so we have to consider these guys. Lonnie Walker, 4.6K, probably plays, you know, 25 to 30 minutes. Um, price has come down. I think he's definitely a pretty good value point. I think Dennis Schroeder at 4.1K has been starting playing around 30 minutes is a pretty good value play as well. Um, so they're not going to be high productive guys playing alongside LeBron and AD, but we are starving for value on the slate. So I think they look like two of the better value plays on the slate. Austin Reeves went back to the bench, but he's been playing around 25-ish minutes. If you want to go there, I definitely don't hate it, but more so into Dennis Schroeder and Lonnie Walker um, there. So... Good spot here for Cleveland. One of the dream matchups here. Lakers first in pace, um, and they are middle of the road defensively, 11th in defensive rating. So I keep preaching it. Guards have been absolutely destroying the Lakers. So I really like Donovan Mitchell here at 8.7K going up the Laker, up up against the Lakers. I think he's one of my favorite um, mid-range to upper spend-ups on the slate. Just playing huge, huge minutes right now. Uh, Going to shoot the ball probably 20-plus time. Like I said, the matchup against the Lakers is one of the best in the league for guards. So, yeah, I really like Mitchell. Garland, 8.2K, 8 is the pivot off a of popular Mitchell, but I'd much, much rather just spend the extra 500 to get up to to get up to get Mitchell. But I think both are fine plays, good plays, actually. Jared Allen is questionable. If he is out, Evan Mobley at 7.6K, 7.6K, I think is a fine option. He's playing huge minutes as well. Lakers have not been good against opposing centers, so I think he would be a perfectly solid play at 7.6K, assuming Jared Allen's out. If Jared Allen's in, he's just too cheap at 6.3K. I would like him, assuming he's not on a limit. Um, so a lot to like here with Cleveland. Um, Kevin Love at 5.1K, you know, as you guys know, minutes are all over the place, but he does have a ceiling. He has sleep breaking upside. Um, if we're going to get, you know, 20, 25 minutes of Kevin Love against the Lakers with LeBron coming back to Cleveland, um, yeah, I think he's perfectly fine for GPPs. Karis LeVert on a normal night probably plays around 20, 25 minutes. I don't hate him for value. I think it's perfectly fine. Um, hasn't been producing of late, but, um, you know, he'll be relatively productive when he's on the court. I don't hate it. Chetty Osman, I would only play if Jared Allen's out. He's been, you know, probably playing close to 30 minutes off the bench. Has been very, very bad, but usually he's a solid point per minute guy. I'm fine with it. Um, not going to go out of my way, but I do like Chetty for value as well. Like, they're not guys. Like, there isn't value on the slate, so I have to say I like these guys for value. I, I, I would try to not play them, but... There just isn't value. Um, Dykite has been starting, but I don't think he can go there. Uh, so yeah, um, a lot to like with Cleveland, actually. It's very, very freaking disgusting. Um, I know, but I like Cleveland tomorrow a lot. 
Denver. Where's Denver? 22nd in pace and 26th in defensive rating. So I don't know how you're going to pay for Luka tomorrow um, with the terrible value that we have, but if you, want to, if, if you feel comfortable with the value, he obviously has the highest floor and ceiling on the uh, on the slate, in my opinion. So it's not the best spot against Denver, but if you feel comfortable with the value, go for it. I think it's going to be pretty hard to pay off this price tag. But um, like if you fade him, what, what really does Luka need to kill you? So usually in basketball, 5x is kind of reaching value. So if you go 13 by 5, I believe it's 65. I'm good at math. Um, that's not going to kill you at that price tag. If we go, if if he goes 6x, 78, that's getting to the point where it's like, okay, I think you don't need him to bank. I don't, or I think you don't need him to bank cash and you don't need him to do really well. So what does he really need to really kill you? I think it's like 84 at that price tag to really, really freaking kill you. Maybe like 78, 79, 80. Um, so at this price tag, I think it's really hard for him to kill you. But as we saw tonight, he can go for 80 any night. He didn't play the fourth quarter and he had 60 freaking fantasy points. So in play, always, I'm not getting to wood. I don't care what anyone says. Dimwitty at 6.4K, meh, price about right to me. Dorian Fiddy Smith probably plays, you know, 30, 35 ish minutes. Kind of needs the minutes to get there. Has been losing minutes of late, so it's really hard for me to click on his name, but I'm sure he's going to project as a solid value, but playable. Tim Hardaway Jr. is clearly the best value play on the slate. It's not even close. Um, been playing huge, huge minutes of late, you know, around 30. That's more than we've ever seen from uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., so I consider that pretty big minutes for him. Been, been shooting the ball extremely, extremely well. Probably going to be around 80% owned tomorrow, but does have a low floor if he's not hitting the shots, but... I, I think he's clearly the best value on the slate. Kemba Walker was active today, but didn't play. Keep an eye on that. That could impact some things with guys like, uh, I don't know who that would impact, to be honest. Tim Hardaway. I, I think they just let Tim Hardaway Jr. ride. So I'd assume Kemba to not play here. Um, would play today, right? He did. Maxi Kleba, surprisingly, still played decent minutes um, off the bench with Wood back. He still played 24, but got a lot of freaking blow run. Okay, so I would assume high teens to around 20 minutes, which makes him playable, but not my favorite. Josh Green has still been an integral part of this rotation. I think he's playable, but I don't think we need to go there. Alright, um, Dallas... Dallas. I feel like they play slow. They do. 29th in pace. 9th in defensive rating. So, tough spot here, but I think right now, Jokic is my preferred spend-up on the slate. I think this is just the much better spend-up spot to attack. Like, you have AD going up against Cleveland. You have Luka going up in this, like, meh, gross spot against Denver. I, th I think Jokic individually might be the best spot as a spend up. Um, and he's discounted from the other guys. Um, and if he's going to be lower on than AD, just give me Jokic. So, yeah, I, I think Jokic is definitely my favorite spend up on the slate. Jamal Murray has been good of late, but I think he's appropriately priced. Bruce Brown, same thing, appropriately priced. Usage goes down playing alongside Jamal Murray. It's so hard for me to go there. MPJ is out, so you can consider a guy like Aaron Gordon. He'll play huge minutes, but production has been up and down. But a guy that can do a little bit of everything, so I think he's fine. Bones Highland, got to keep an eye on this. He was dealing with an illness, and he barely played. Only played five minutes. I think he tried to play and couldn't. Keep an eye on this news, so it's really hard for me to break down now. KCP is questionable. So, if KCP is in, I will say this. If KCP is in... I believe they're going to start Devon Reed. Now, Devon Reed is not a good point for a minute guy, but we have no value on the slate, and I'd assume he'd probably play over 20 minutes, making him playable for value. And then if Jeff Green 
for some reason is in that is probably going to boot Kankar out of the rotation. So um, I wouldn't play Kankar if Jeff Green is in. Um, so keep an eye on that news. So I hope this guys help. I hope this helped you guys, and I will talk to you tomorrow.